Right, Digital Cortex 610. What's up, yo? Uh, what do you think about that music, man? It, we just dropped a new hit. Yeah, we worked on our uh, intro music today. Yeah. Dude. That was fun. Yeah, that was I good like time. doing that kind of stuff, just building shit on the computer. It's fun. That's crazy the stuff you can do with the computers these days. It's almost too much. Like, you want to be restricted a little bit because when there's two it's just like somebody handing you all the paints you know and you're like if you just hand me three paints i would start going at it right away you know but if you hand me all of the paints i'm just looking at them like i don't know what to do you know it's, <laughs> al it's almost like less is better you know like how like nintendo do nintendo was so restricted in the beginning of what they could make you know but they figured out doo -doo 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 -doo. like they figured out the simplest oh, little you mean like the songs song like, like yeah just like the whole like world the whole uh what am i i'm looking for a certain word like the whole like interface of nintendo like the what they could the whole okay, world so that they could build like in. limited on their technology but using everything they can yeah, because to make it they had to build the game but and then they had to have music in the game and they only had so much space they had you know they were restricted in so many ways but look what they built they built like the this game is gonna live forever dude mario is gonna outlive us yeah he's getting his own movie now again i yeah. mean i kind of forgot that they did that first uh super mario brothers movie oh dude that was so weird it was right yeah the like fucking the, goombas were like six feet tall it was oh man who was who were the that actors one of them had the harmonica oh know. okay one of them was uh god what's his name um uh, space on the name i don't know i, I could and look he, it up he, he was recently in um in kanto was he yeah he played bruno he was bruno he was bruno Holy shit. You didn't know that? How did that come? I don't know. I guess he's a good actor, right? Yeah. He's a good actor. What? Wait, he's, which he's one played actor. Bruno? Lu Mario or Luigi? Luigi. Oh, okay. I was going to say, is Mario even still alive, dude? What's his name? You know, I also remember him from uh, the Spawn movie, too, because he played the... Um... All right, look up his name. Yeah, let's see. John Super Leguizamo. Movie. Yes, that's what it is. That's the name. John Leguizamo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's him. Yeah, as soon as he said Spawn, I was like, that's John Leguizamo. The other guy was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, he's a good Bob actor. Bob Hoskins. Is Bob Hoskins still alive? That's the question. <sighs> no. Bob Hoskins passed in 2014. Wow. Yeah. How old? Uh, He was... Not that old, right? 50? 60? 1942 to 2014. I know. They don't say the age. I'm not good at so math. So I got to do the math. Let's see here. 40 to 2000 would be 60. Add another 10 on top of that. So it was 72. If I did my math right. When was he born? 19. 1942. He's 72. Okay. That's how you math, man. I taught you the, the tricks. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, that's decent. I guess. Oh, that's right. He was in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, 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 that dude. That's where else I remember him from. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't a bad actor. They picked good actors. He but was it was just hook. a weird movie, dude. Like, did they even go into a tunnel? Did they go into a any kind of plumbing? Come on. <laughs> did they drop into a I know that they pipe? dropped into that other world, but I don't remember how. Because the the idea in that movie was that they were like plumbers. I think they were like Brooklyn plumbers or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. And that. And somehow uh, had to go save their girlfriends, who were not real princesses, if I recall. Okay. But they were stolen into this other world. They were like kidnapped. It, Oh, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah, it's been a while. It was uh, in the 90s. But I remember that they had to go to this other universe to go save them. And they had to learn how the universe worked. The only thing that keeps coming into my mind is those guys with 
little heads the goombas yeah so in that universe like uh Spiky teeth. they would they would um turn people into goombas okay yeah they would shrink your head right and then and yoshi was in there too but yoshi was like actual like raptor or something yeah <laughs> which was crazy weird yeah that was a weird movie but we all just accepted it we're like all right this yeah is and we we're all just like okay well, let's go watch it yeah because we, we were like what young kids yeah when that movie came out what uh now the new ones not they're not doing they're not going for that anymore they're not doing the realism they're going for cartoon yeah i believe it's going to be animated and Kinda mario like is going to be played by chris pratt chris pratt yeah because they were making a big deal like he can't do it i'm like of course he can he's an actor he can do anything yeah let's see the new super mario is going to be Oh, and Princess Peach is going to be uh, Anya Taylor Joy. She's a girl who's from um, the uh, Queen's Gambit. That's what it was. Queen's Gambit. Never saw it. You never seen the Queen's Gambit? No. You know what? Let's take a shot. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> I yes. Just, I looked down and I was like, wait a minute. We poured these. Cheers. Uh, wait, tell them what we're what we're chugging down here. I don't know. You tell me, dude. It's the Buffalo Trace. Oh yeah, Buffalo Trace. Buffalo man. Trace. Burn. In honor of Buffalo Trace. She looks down so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it got you oh, again. It did. <laughs> oh, it takes a moment for me to breathe. We turn into the Top Gun, man. Take my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Um, Wash it down with some of that. Uh, angry Orchard. Mm -hmm. Let's not go on a tangent about an Angry Orchard. We already did that. Yeah, we discussed it. Um, but um, she's a good actress. She's a great actress. The Queen's Gambit was a really good. Um, what does she look like? Let me see. It was a TV show. She, Pull up a picture. She's got a very recognizable face. I don't know. I'm she has so these bad like, names. eyes. Yeah, and they're like, I don't want to say weird, but they're very, mm. they're very out there, dude. Yeah, she could be like an avatar or something. Yeah, she's a. Uh, she also did that Marvel movie. Um, what was it? X Men. Called? The New she Mutants. Had... New Mutants. New Mutants. Okay. Yes, this is, she was in. Yeah, New see, Mutants. that's what I'm saying. She looks like a mutant. <laughs> Oh, like, and then very famously too, um, her eyes are like a little bit farther apart than like, you know how like when you're character character building in a video game and you can make your eyes really close. Yeah, and really, like somebody just went like. She has Shoo. very distinctive facial features. Yeah, she has big, gorgeous eyes, and then high cheekbones. I would say, and it's like thin profiled chin. Like a supermodel or something. Yeah, exactly, and so. She she sticks out a but lot, but she's a good actor too. She's a great actress, and I didn't uh, see New Mutants. Is that a t she, was that a TV show or a movie? No, that was a movie. Okay, that was a movie. Um, it was a it was done by the Fox Studios before mm. they they were Disney, I think. Uh, and then so and then Disney. Most bought them. recently, I think it was the. Yeah, we saw this one in theaters last night in Soho. Um, it's a real weird kind of i want to say like horror drama okay. uh and it takes place about this this girl I, I can't really explain it but it was a um an edgar wright film you know who edgar wright is edgar wright he, uh, he's the guy did he do baby did, driver uh don't think he did baby driver but he did scott pilgrim i want to say he was supposed to be the one that was right he was doing ant man and then they and then he quit or something like that i think you're right on that oh yeah he did david he did baby driver baby driver i know him from all the um those british ones so hot fuzz Shaun of the dead yeah he's worked with simon Pegg a lot mm -hmm. and yeah. scott all oh, the world's end yeah oh they, he did ant man yeah they still i think they still credited him but i think he quit before the movie came out or the movie started filming. Yeah. Because he, he's a he had this crazy when they were talking about Ant Man, he had he made this crazy clip of an animation of Ant they never ended up using it, but um you know, Ant Man's running down a, 
like they had like an animated version. Ant Man's running down this corridor, and then there's a dude with a gun, and he like he does his morph into like super small, and he like jumps on the bullet or something like that, and then jumps on the gun, and it's like running across the gun, and then like starts punching the dude. And it was this crazy animation just to kind of show like the vision of what he had for Ant Man. And I was like, "Oh shit, dude! When you when you do that, it looks crazy." I think you can still find it online. It's a crazy clip. I like it. I like the concept of Batman. I did you watch that clip I sent you, Batman? Of the stupid uh, when they were talking about the theories of how they were gonna kill Thanos, and one of them oh, yeah. was uh, to put Ant Man up his ass and expand. Yes, yes, I remember that was a big thing on the internet. At the time. Oh my god, that was but so stupid. That bleeds into like most recent things. Have you kept up with the boys? Well, yeah, yeah, remember? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, the only spoilers. What, I don't know. Do you want to spoil? Let's not spoil. Why but not? It's, it's they, been out. Okay, let's just this say. This episode has been out for for at least. A, I thought it was in the new season. It is in the new season, but this was like last week's episode. Yeah, dude, that's new, man. <laughs> no, man, because the, the, it's not even like the most recent episode. Yeah, but People I'm just saying. it's enough time to it's see It's the it. most recent. Let's give I it some time. I haven't even seen the most recent episode. That came out yes today. Today's I Friday. know. I'm saying. I said, let's wait till the season's over at least. No. But I want to talk about it now. <laughs> It was this so a, fucking iconic. It's exactly okay. what everyone was fucking talking okay. about. All right. All right. If, all right. if you want to spoil Let's it. Let's set it up. Anybody that's listening, you can fast forward yeah, probably like you can go ahead a couple and, minutes. And, uh, we'll give you a couple minutes. We'll, we'll put you on a timer, dude. Yeah, okay. Go for it, man. Uh, starting spoil now. Spoil your yeah. heart out. So um, we all knew those those like theories of like, oh, yeah, the Ant-Man just crawled Thanos' butt. Turn big again, and then boom, Thanos. Explodes. Do you think that would work though? I don't know. I think so. Maybe. What if? Because Thanos is like celestial, dude. Like, what if he just got stuck in there and he couldn't expand or something? Like that's a that's a that's a celestial. Thanos isn't a celestial. I thought he was. He's a titan. I thought he was part celestial. No, he's called the Mad Titan. I don't think he's celestial. What kind he's of? He's definitely strong. What kind of? power does ant-man have to constantly be like shrinking and expanding in mass dude doesn't that generate a lot of power isn't that why he gets so tired like after he like so it doesn't come from him though it comes from the pin particles yeah but i'm saying that still you have to generate a lot of energy to be able to do that like when he becomes super giant and then he gets tired real fast Okay, I guess you're right, because it does change the way... I guess he said he couldn't keep that up for very long. Yeah, yeah, it wears him out. Right, because at that point, it changes... Because when he's small, he keeps the relative strength of of being you know, a human. And then when he's an ant, he has a right. hundred times or whatever exactly. the strength, when like an ant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when he's like giant like that, it there must be some scientific mumbo jumbo that that makes it seem like the atmosphere or the gravity or something changes with him being at a different size or something like that. I really don't know. Yeah, the amount of energy though would it take to expand like that. Would that's be crazy. that's a whole scientific topic. I know that, you could go down a whole rabbit hole about that, but yeah, we'd have to get a special. Guest I'm just wondering on because of what Ant Man. I just started thinking about that because it would he have enough power to? You know what we should do? Tear. We should find a physicist. I know, right? And ask get them. a physicist and have them like, like talk break about it, it down. Yeah, if that's break it down even. for us. Can you talk to us about superhero powers? Yeah. <laughs> what a waste of their fucking time huh? do you know how strong thanos is he can weld the glove the gauntlet or whatever what, what's his uh shit no called? no 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 that thing was made so that it could take the abrasion of of like the stones the infinity gauntlet yeah the infinity gauntlet but yeah but still he you have to have a certain because even the hulk can hold it together with that shit you know like it fucked up his arm right but but it wasn't it wasn't made for him like that no i know but thanos has a certain amount of power that he can but even then it. It, it did fuck up thanos's arm too yeah well he 
when you used all of them at once, it fucking killed. Yeah, it, it, when it, he it when he destroyed half of the yeah, it destroyed planets. like half his body. Now, when he did that, did it only affect Earth, or did he do that to all the planets? He did the whole oh, yeah. universe. He did it to the whole universe, right? Because yeah, universe. Miss Captain Marvel was going around to different planets, right? And she's like, "Yeah, he fucked up everything." Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's way too much power. Yeah, that fucked him up. But he was still alive. Right. Yeah. Anyways, we're, we're, we're yeah, talking about Thanos too much. Go ahead. Yeah, go the, for the it. Back is, to the, bo- the boys. The point is that the boys did something we... Stopped it. Uh, yeah, I did. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, what, Where did we leave off? <laughs> we left off right when I stopped it because I felt my hand... Oh, you pushed it? Okay, the, the go for it. The space bar. And so let me just move this keyboard away from me because... Hey, that's Don't never happened. That happen. That's never happened for wow. us. Um, okay, go for it. But I'll, I'll fix that up in post. The pee hole. Yes. So the we see the boys. <laughs> there is this uh, this character that we find the boys. Like Ant Man, right? Yes, he has powers like Ant Man, so he can um, shrink himself. But he could do it without a suit on. What is so, his name in the boys? His name is the termite. Oh I yeah, believe. that's right. His name is the termite. <laughs> so stupid. It's really, it's really. Are ridiculous. termites that strong too? Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't but know. but I don't know. The boys is not like, oh, I got my powers from a termite. They're they're genetically like altered babies, and so they get the powers. I don't even know what kind of powers they have. You know, but what termites? Like, do did they... you see that that uh the the boys animated thing diabolical? Um no. So they kind of do like this explanation about it. Like there's, so what we found out in I think the boys season two or it could have been season one is that the superheroes aren't born. They're oh yeah, they have that blue shit right? right. Yeah. And so parents paid like a shit ton to inject their babies with this yeah. shit and have them develop superpowers because you don't know what kind of superpower you're gonna get. You can get anything. It's you a roll of anything. dice, right? So, um, like, there's super-powered people who don't even, like, their parents can't control them. Like, they came out with fucking weird superpowers. So, in The Boys Diabolicals, the animated series that they did, uh, I want to say a couple months ago it came out. Yeah. Um, and we see, like, there's some characters living in this, this like, home for abandoned superhero youths mm-hmm. whose parents didn't want them anymore. One of them, I think, is called, like, the narrator, and he's, like, this baby in a wheelchair, uh, and all he does is, like, narrate everything. That's his superpower. He Mm. narrates. And there's another one who's got, like, boobs for her eyes. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, weird superpowers that really don't do anything. Yeah, what are you going to do with boobs for eyes? Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> I guess work in, a, work in uh, a brothel, I guess. Right. And then so there's like one of them who's like a perpetual ghost. Uh, but the problem is, is like she's always hungry. and But she can't eat anything because she's a ghost person. Oh, that sounds like hell. Yeah, there's a lot of like fucked up shit that happens in this. And then if you're lucky to have a superpower that can actually be monetized, you can live a, a you know, decent Yeah, because they're like rock stars. Right. Yeah. So... You know, he gets his name probably not because his powers are derivative of, of come from something like that, you know, but because somebody's like publicity is like, oh, we'll call you the termite. Even though termites have no expanding properties. Or, exactly. But yeah. whatever. Anyways, everybody gets the idea. The termite, yeah, yeah. ants. Ant-Man, is, whatever. Yeah, yeah they, they're know. not trying to infringe on other people's work. but They're, they're trying to, but without trying. Exactly. You know? They're like, hey, you know, Ant-Man, this is like the knockoff version. So Termite, the first time we see him, he's fucking a Barbie doll. Nice. <laughs> and everybody's cheering him on at the party doing it. Uh, then, can, how are they watching He's so small. He he's got like half of a little dollhouse. You know, like dollhouses like have the back of it is all open, so you see the whole floor plan and everything. So he only shrinks down to the size of a doll. I think he could shrink smaller than that too. But at this point, he shrinked down oh, to the okay. size of a dollhouse. He was in the dollhouse in fucking Malibu Stacy's dollhouse or whatnot. She doesn't have any holes, dude. Did he have a drill? A hole? I don't fucking know what he did. He probably drilled a hole, or maybe it was just thigh fucking her. <laughs> but the dude Dry is humping. fucking this Barbie doll 
and everybody's cheering him on for it. And then he finishes up. He starts like making out with his boyfriend. They walk into a different room. They're doing some fucking coke, right? So they're snorting coke, and the boyfriend's like, I want you inside me. And so he unzips his pants, flops his dick on the desk. They show it? Yes. Oh, And so penis. the termite shrinks down, and we see his view of him looking at this giant fucking cock jumping over lines of coke. Yeah. And he, oh, he's just hopping over it, yeah, like he's skipping. Yeah, over it, yeah. And so... He like sneezing a little bit because you know he's doing the coke and shit, and then so he uh goes into the dudes. Now, if you guys aren't into like some kind of like you don't want to hear this shit, please t- pause it, turn it off, fast forward. But no, he enters too late for that. <laughs> the urethra, yeah, of the man's dick. Yeah, I and tried to not guy... talk. For the record, I tried to not talk about this. <laughs> you wanted to. <laughs> It was just so I've never fucking seen something like this before. Yeah. It's fucking outrageous. So he he enters he jumps the in. dude's yeah. dick, and he starts like trying to pleasure him from the inside of his dick, like touching the inside of the walls. And he's making his way in there, and you can hear the boyfriend be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go find my prostate," and like so. I guess that's how they get off or something. Yeah, you know, whatever. To each their own. Got it. The problem occurs. When the termite, coked up, needs to sneeze again. Yeah. And so when he sneezes, he activa- accidentally activates his powers. Yeah. And he grows full size. Yeah. While he's inside this man's genitals. Yeah. And in doing so, rips the entire bottom half of this dude's body apart. The guy's like body, blood everywhere. And... The the boyfriend's body ends up half on the bed, and as he does, he has no half of the body anymore. So all of his internals and his torso start like just flowing out mm. from the bottom of his body. And he's like yelling, or he's just dead. And so he's just fucking dead. Okay. He's just done. He's yeah. done. And so the termite sitting there covered in his boyfriend's, you know, his fucking lover's blood and yeah. guts and shit, all like, what the fuck? And then that's when our, our one of our boys, Frenchie, is there. He's like, uh, I did not see anything. And he tries to run away. Yeah. And the termite's like, oh, no. And then this whole fucking battle scene happens. But that's exactly what we wanted Wait, to see. Wait, he said, oh, no, and he chased him? He's like, no, I can't let you leave. I can't let you leave. Because he's like, he's seen too much. So he's going to try to fucking kill Frenchie. Oh, he wants to kill him. Yeah, so he does it by like trying to crawl up Frenchie's pants. And do the same thing? And do the fucking same thing, man. And so... And go in his nostril or something. Oh, no, no, man. He he got a fucking fetish. We already know that. (laughs) He could have went went into the ear. He could have went... No, man. He wants it in the butt or he wants it in the urethra. Yeah, yeah. I'd like I said, teach their own, you know? I don't want anything going to my urethra. Yeah. But, like, that seems like it would be painful. Uh, But I guess some people find pleasure in it. I guess. I'm not here to judge. What I'm here to say... Is that scene was fucking mad, and it yeah. was awesome. So the boys have a history of doing this. They they go to the places that Marvel won't go. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And Amazon Prime seems to be all for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, do it. They're like, yeah, we could do that. Let's let's fucking do that. I guess because they know they're not ever gonna be Marvel. They're just like, why not just be what they can't do. they're gonna be whatever's gonna fucking sell well, they, subscriptions no they will they'll be what marvel will never do Mar- marvel will never have a scene where ant-man actually does some crazy no, shit like it, that why would ant-man kill somebody like that the superheroes in marvel they don't kill For unless the most they're part. like anti-heroes For the most anti-heroes part. can cross you're allowed to kill aliens and stuff you know, when they were invading New York, you're allowed to chop their heads off and shoot, shoot them with arrows in the in the eye and shit. But for the most part, yeah, but those are aliens. They don't exactly, to us. <laughs> exactly. You're allowed to kill some things, just not anything that is real. Not, and especially if you're doing it, you're not doing it with so much attention, blood and guts everywhere. No, like they, that's what's great about the boys is that like you see your superheroes like you would see them. Okay. You've got, like, the first fucking episode of The Boys Season 1 where we have A-Train. He's essentially the Flash. And what happens when he's running in the street? 
and he runs through somebody. Mm, yeah. Fucking evaporates them into a cloud of fucking red mist. Which would happen, I guess, if because uh, that yeah. makes fucking fucking sense. Yeah. And then that's the thing about it is like superheroes in this world are normal human people. They've got their flaws and they don't always have the best kind of control on it all. Mm. So yeah. And some of them are just fucking like over over what's the word? Like that they just feel way more and fucking entitled. Which is like our big bad superhero uh um homelander, you yeah. know? He's pretty much Superman. Mixed uh, with if Captain Superman America. had no fucking morals. Yeah. Yeah. And so no, their Captain America is a uh, soldier boy. Well, I know I'm saying, but Homelander is like they got him in the red, white, and blue, and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I see your point. But there. yeah, no, he's a mixture of Superman with the laser eyes and all that shit flying. Right, he's yeah. Superman. I mean, and then it's the other thing that Amazon has has taken too is um, Invincible. Invincible is another great fucking. I was reading that comic long time ago before i even heard that they were going to be doing a, a tv show about it and if you haven't gone to see invincible yet go see that one it's Is animated that oh yeah the season one happened like a couple of years ago i want to say um and it's so good like man i, I gotta let you Wait, invincible comics. is on what streaming it's on series? amazon prime it's, as it's well. on amazon okay. yeah so if you don't know the invincible is um done by the same creator marvel no, Image, Image Comics. Image Comics. Yes, uh, the same people who, the same guy who created The Walking Dead. Okay. Um, whose name is skipping me right now. Okay. Uh, but he created The Walking Dead, and um, then he created Invincible. And when you're looking at his normal stuff, like you're coming from Walking Dead, like this is back in the day, right? And it's like his style and everything is a lot different in Invincible. So Invincible, we see like colorful superhero type comic, totally different than what we're getting in The Walking Dead, right? Um, and so what we follow is this kid whose father is Omni-Man, the world's most powerful superhero. It's like Superman. Yeah. And he doesn't have his powers yet, but you know, he's getting them. So we find him get his powers, right? And now he's like oh cool i'm gonna i'm gonna train with my dad i'm gonna be a superhero as well and it's like you know coming into his own right mm -hmm. um and in this world they have their own version of like the justice league and shit too right? yeah so they've got like a batman in there and a flash and like a green lantern type person and all this other stuff uh and in the first like spoilers for sure um but we see the entirety of their this universe is like justice league fucking get demolished hardcore mm. like fucking hardcore demolished like just heads ripped like suicide off. squad like yeah brutal brutal and that's when we start to see that like this this show and this comic book is not going to be your normal superhero. They set the comic. tone. Yeah, there's definitely a tone where they're not afraid to show the blood and the guts and stuff. Like, I think there's a scene once where he goes to try to save this elderly woman. So he like. Wait, this is another spoiler. Nah, not really. Okay. Um, but like <laughs> invincible. You're, I have no spoilers. He goes to the yeah. Nothing that. is spoiler to me. I mean, you gotta know. We I I prefaced. I prefaced. But, like, he goes to save somebody. <laughs> Wait, what? I preface. I said spoilers. I preface. I preface. <laughs> I pre <-cumped. laughs> What are you doing? No, go for it. So, like, he goes to save this elderly lady and stuff. And uh, humans are fragile. So this lady gets, like, some fucking broken bones ah! and shit. And he's, like, covered in, in her broken leg now. And he's like, oh, ah, oh, ah, I don't uh, I didn't know I was gonna hurt you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like when uh, Andrew Garfield tried to save uh, his girl and he webbed her and she broke her back. Yes, some real shit like that. Except it happens yeah. like ten times more often. But you don't see that was kind of crazy when they killed her that way because 
I mean, you don't see the realism. Usually he just swings in and, like, you know, catches people. You know, and, and you th- know, this like... happened in the comics, too, except I think the comics did it better than the movie. Don't get me wrong. The movie did it great, okay? Yeah. Um, but the comics was a little bit more graphic for it. So in the comics, I believe they're fighting on the top of the bridge, um, that famous uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, I think it is. Uh, and he's fighting the same person, Green Goblin, uh, except I think it's the normal Green Goblin. Um, and so the Green Goblin has her, and then he throws her off of the bridge. Yeah. And so Spider-Man dives to go save her. So in in the movie, he saves her from in this tower and everything, right? And as she's falling down he's bouncing around this clock tower being destroyed or whatnot and and he goes and he catches her by her chest and her head hits the concrete and that's how she died like he didn't catch her he caught her but the backlash of her head hit the floor was it that i thought it was just the back broke Mm -mm. oh she hit her head yeah she hit her head but in um the comics he catches her midair okay yeah. So he swings at her, and I don't even think it's the, her chest that he catches. I believe it's her back. And as he catches her back and pulls her, her neck snaps. Oh, okay. And so the the our inertia, the momentum of it all, snaps her neck, and her neck is broken. And the comics had a very vivid image of her neck just, like, snapped. And her lifeless, like, eyes, I think. Mm. And so that was, like, a really fucking crazy-ass fucking thing to see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, comics always go the extra mile because they can. What do you think about the... um, You were talking about the dude that made Walking Dead. Aren't they making a movie, Walking Dead, finally? They're making a movie? I know they've already had two shows based on The Walking Dead. Yeah, I thought they were working on a movie, finally. I haven't heard of that. Let me look it up real quick. But I know that, like, uh, when he did The Walking Dead, I don't think he got a lot of, like, creative rights going into it. But on the Invincible stuff, I think he had a lot more. Um, But let me see who... Is there a Walking Dead movie coming out? What is a Walking Dead movie's release date? There is no confirmed release date for The Walking Dead movie as of September... Robert Kirkman, that's the guy's name. He did the Invincible. I think they've been talking about this for a while. A Walking Dead movie? Oh, here we go. Um, Let's see. It's been almost four years since AMC announced that a trilogy of the movies, of the films, centered on Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes were on their way. So yeah, they, they announced that they were doing the movie. There's just no set date. I still don't think they have a... That's still like an untitled movie on IMDb. Um, yeah. It know. got messed we'll up. We'll see if that happens. It says it looks like it got messed up because of COVID in 2020. And and that makes sense. There's a lot of things I think got shelved or uh, yeah. canceled. Redone. Okay, so it, they're saying it could be released 2023. Yeah, that's what I heard. I mean, that's what I heard that they were making one, but it seems like it's been pushed back. But I mean, the hype is so much gone, you know, like the movie would have been way better four or five years ago, you know, when it was like killing it. Right. Uh, And I I forgot. I think I like ended. I stopped watching Walking Dead season seven. Yeah, it got kind of weird. I didn't I didn't finish it. You know, I wanted to keep going, but it was just like. I just I felt like I was dragging along, you know. I like remember a when zombie. it first came out, and I think I was in college in San Francisco, um, and that was like 2010. I want to say it was October. Oh, it started off uh, with a bang. I mean, everybody was talking fucking about great. it. Just that fucking iconic scene where he's riding in on the horse and everything. Well, yeah, wakes up in his in his room, hospital mm-hmm. room, not knowing what the fuck's going on, like the chaos of it all and then season two you know i mean with uh shane that was probably one of the best seasons they had 
that was my favorite but um yeah and then it was just crazy to see rick eventually become shane you know the way that shane was talking the way shane was acting the way the way he viewed the world yeah it was interesting i mean that that the show did well with changing the way these characters were well, yeah, just showing and that like eventually, who they are eventually, stuff. you would have to adapt. You would have to become yes. some sort of a less feelings, more instinctive, because the world is too violent. Like you change from being like your humanity is is different now. The idea of it is different. Yeah, you live in it because you're you chaotic like, world. Yeah, and especially where everybody you run into is fucking like untrustable now everyone's like because they have to look out for themselves right i mean there's nobody to protect you there's no police there's no government you know what i like too is that they never called them zombies in that i always thought that was interesting there was always uh, walkers or other groups had different names for them and shit yeah what was the other names i don't know i can't think of any of them right now but like i said it's been a long time i think how many seasons did they make that like 11 12 yeah chompers biters biters. something, something like that something like that yeah um yeah but uh you know who i always thought was so interesting so uh my late aunt she was 93 years old and her favorite thing to watch was the walking dead she loved it she fucking loved it yeah and she would you know i would go over and we'd be at her house you know at 11 o'clock at night when it came on and we would just be watching the walking dead together yeah because that was her thing she loved watching it. i was like why do you love this and she was like oh I think it's just because it's gory. <laughs> she was just so into that zombies and then the. the Wait, so she, was she it. around for World War Two? She was ninety yes. something. She had to have been, huh? She was. She was in high school, I think, during oh, World shit. War Two. Um, but she lived in New Mexico. Think about that world, dude. Yeah, I, I, I we'd asked her about it once too. All right, I asked her, I was like, so tell me about like World War Two." She's like, "Oh well." I mean, I knew it was happening, but it never affected me, is what she said. She, like, knew people that left for the war, but she lived in a rural part of New Mexico. She didn't have, like, you know, cousins or brothers or people that went to war and died? Her brother was younger, so she didn't have anybody like that, any other family in that type of sense. And my family was living in New Mexico before it was even part of the United States. So... Hmm. And the area that they were living in, like I said, very rural. Uh, like, she went to elementary school, and it was like your class had multiple grades in one class type of school. Yeah. Like, they, they had, like, huge generational gaps because you only had, like, maybe, like, a handful of kids in that area that can make it to that school that were even in the same age, you know? Yeah, I mean, back then, I mean, the way my – nana talks about it It, school was like optional it was kind of a thing like some kids went to school some didn't some Mm -hmm. were working some didn't like she was the type too that she loved going to school she loved learning but she also had to help her family and she had to work in the field she had to do all that and um but she always loved to learn she always loved going to school but you know she just couldn't because they were they had to help the family they had even if she wasn't working in the field she was making tortillas you know she was like uh, making food for everybody that was going to be going out in the morning so she would make a stack as you know as tall as her of tortillas just rolling them making the dough everything and then making burritos for everybody and like she's like eight years old nine years old you know doing this and I re- she told me a story of her like there was the kids that worked and the kids that kind of c- came and gone and they they would be like set apart from the kids that came regularly so like the kids that came regularly would have like a certain packet of work to do and then the kids that kind of were seasonal or kind of like here and there coming in they would have other stuff to do like easier stuff to do but she always thought it was boring like it was too easy for her and she like she would just be staring at the other kids and she wanted to do their work and the teacher noticed one day like and asked her like what do you want like you seem like you're bored or you seem like you you don't like 
what I gave you. And she's like, I want to do that work. And she gave her one of the packets of the other kids work so she could do it. But she, yeah, she was a type. She didn't go. She didn't. I don't think she finished school. But did but, she grow up out here? Yeah, she didn't graduate. Um, but she ended up getting her GED later. I want to say, and she had taught herself to to read and write. She would just read books, and like she had to do all this later in life because she didn't uh, have a chance to go to school. Crazy. Yeah, it was just a different world. Now you just like if you don't go to school, you got like you know parents could end up in jail and shit because they want everybody in school, and this is like a it's a totally different world. That's why oh, I was yeah. saying like. To be talking to somebody from the World War Two era, like world, the world was so different. Well, see, the funny thing is, is that like, <laughs> well, we would ask her about it. It's like, well, she what was did more you nonchalant did, about it. Did you like, you know, because you hear about people who's like, well, I helped the war effort at home, and you know, how it influenced. And I guess it never really reached her small little town. Yeah. And like, I was like, well, so what did you do? She's like, oh, I don't know. I was too preoccupied chasing boys. <laughs> oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> You're like, whoa. Whoa, yeah. yeah. But uh, I always thought it was so interesting that she was like a big fan of The Walking Dead. I think I'd at my local comic book store, they had um, some artist drawings uh, of the characters and stuff. Yeah framed and everything and i bought her a couple of those and like a pop figure and, and she she knew all the people's names and she was always like oh that negan i hate him he's yeah. so mean and her favorite um was uh oh what's the girl's name with the uh with the with the swords oh he's talking michonne about, yeah but she never called her michonne she called her michonee <laughs> Shawnee. Yeah, she was she was a sweet old lady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting. I mean, uh, just looking through other people's lenses, you know, even like a kid's lens, you know, watching them play with certain things and they're just like discovering things. And, you know, you see a kid and he's walking and he sees a puddle and you, you're like, he's going to jump in it. I know he's going to jump in that goddamn puddle. And sure enough, he does. You know, you're like, yes. You know, like <laughs> as long as it's not your kid, you're like yes. <laughs> it reminds that me part. that. Uh, but you you remember when it brought you so much joy and excitement when you were a kid? You're like you saw a puddle. You're like I don't know why, but I gotta jump in that thing. You know, something is making me want to. And you, it's like you don't think about it when you're a kid, but it's funny to examine it later. But you're like, yeah, I gotta. There's uh, whatever I do in my life, I'm jumping in that damn puddle. You know. It's just like you don't get that curiosity. You only get that one time in your life, you know, and you have to try to kind of hold on to it. If you can try and hold on to curiosity about everything, this makes you a better person, you know. That's pretty deep, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be like bringing us down to earth like that. Yeah, shit, fuck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, no, I'm just. You thought uh, you were going to come in here and. Just listen to two dudes fucking talk about shit. Yeah, we talk a lot of shit, but and then you uh, get some life lessons in it. Yeah, keep the curiosity fire going. You know, that's what it's all about. Fuck. But uh, yeah, no, I I think I still have a little bit of it. You know, I've been able to hold on to it. Um, and I still see it. You know, every now and then, you know, like you feel compelled. You have to, like, I have to do this. You know, like. I see this box and it has all these, these all these uh, air pockets. I gotta pop them, you know. Like <laughs> you're like, I don't know what it is, but I gotta pop them, man. I know it's gonna be loud. You know, it's funny because I popped a bunch of balloons at work, and um, <laughs> they told me to stop, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, dude. Like, like uh, you're being too noisy. Yeah, they're like, oh, um, you um, you shouldn't. There's an easier way to do it, and I'm like, no. Nah, there's an easier way, but then there's also the way. there's a there's probably a less loud way is what you're trying to say. But the easier way is for me to just pop it the way I'm doing it. That is definitely the easiest way. You're trying to make me not have fun is what you're doing. Yeah. 
Why you are you fun scared po- of the little noise? Yeah, you fun police. Damn. I guess they're worried about like, oh, you know, maybe somebody thinks some bad is happening. You know, in the kind of world we live in, you know, for sure, you got to worry about that kind of shit. But um, yeah, I don't know. I still find my ways of jumping in puddles. You know, if you don't jump in puddles, dude, what is what are you living for, man? You know. I don't know, man. Like, there's a part of me that doesn't want to jump in puddles because I'm not wearing the right type of shoes for it. Yeah, but sometimes you gotta say, "Fuck it, dude." Jump in that goddamn puddle. Who cares if you're wearing sandals or something? If you're in sandals, sandals, no, I'm talking about like socks and sneakers. I'm not trying to get my. You even walk around in like some s- s- wet socks all day and your feet turn to like. That's how you get trench foot, man. <laughs> gout. Is that how you get gout? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, gout's a different thing. But um, you, ever, you heard of trench foot? No, this trench is foot, like dude? an old thing. I, that's an exaggeration. Yeah, I don't even me, think that's a real medical term. It but is go a ahead. real medical term. Trench foot. Yes, from like World War One. Oh, man. because your foot never fully dries. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, they would their socks would be soaked in their foot. Yeah. You know, your like your hands get wrinkly and shit. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that times ten. Your skin just like it start dissolving, right? It starts wearing away or you something. You pull off your sock and your skin goes with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's disgusting. You're not going to get trench foot from <laughs> No, one. I know, I know. Like I said, it's an exaggeration for sure. Yeah. But the point is, is like, you know, walk around and your foot's going to be all, it starts to hurt. Walk no, around, if I'm wearing some. with the wrinkly, wet, soggy dude, socks Dude, uh, if I'm shoes, wearing man. some. Yeah, I'll put my rain boots on and I'll jump in it. Because at least I know I'm protected. No, I'm not changing for it, dude. It's got to be spur of the moment. If you don't live. I'll do some other like fun things. Like I like building Legos. If I'm wearing some Jordan 1s that I just bought, yes, I'm not going to jump in the puddle. Dude, I but, just did you know, you know how Legos started? How Legos started? Yes, the Lego company. What is it made by like Germans or something? No, is that no, what no, you're going to no, tell no, me? No, they're, they're Norwegian, I think. Oh, okay. Um. But we're talking about World War II. I thought you were going to be like, so what happened was Hitler was trying well, to find actually, a way. Yeah, it was. I think it was World War II, because uh, in 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 this country, a lot of the toys came from Germany. Okay. But when Germany started invading them, they were like, uh, "Fuck you!" Yeah, we don't want German shit anymore. Yeah. So. This guy he created his company Lego, which uh, I think it was like that. Their words for uh, s- something to do with like fun and blocks creativity. No, fun. First toy wasn't wasn't blocks. They actually made toys out of wood. Wood Legos. No, the, the Lego was the company. They made toys out of wood. Their what was first, the first Lego made out of? The first Lego was made out of plastic, but they didn't make Legos. How yet. did they? mold plastic back then though that that's was until the 50s when plastic mold actually became a thing so that's what i'm saying what was the first legos ever made out of they weren't legos the company didn't make legos the lego bricks that you know that's not how they started the company lego started making wooden ducks on wheels Uh, okay i thought you were gonna say they started making those uh those other wooden blocks, those uh, cabin ones. Remember those ones? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the Lincoln logs. logs. Yeah. Yeah, no. I guess those are first Legos, right? No. Well, maybe. No, this is you're a, building, a little different. No, you're connecting. You're building. A little different. Uh, it is different, but it's the same kind of concept, right? I guess the idea. Yeah. But, but what's different about Legos is, well, I mean, the history of it, they started making things out of wood. All and right. they were making a bunch of different wooden toys. Then they had a fire, and the factory burned down. Because it's m- mostly wood. Because it's mostly wood. Yeah, sounds right. And uh, then they were finding that, like, you know, it's kind of harder to get wood. Yeah. Wood uh, kind of sucks. So they were trying to, like, well, what kind of stuff can we build instead out of what other materials are available? And that's when plastics started becoming big in the 50s. Oh, my God. Somebody could go back in time and kill those people. Yeah. That's like that's like Terminator style, dude. <laughs> we gotta stop them from using plastics, dude. We got you know how much plastics are in the water and our food and so everything. Much. What did they say? Like they a, said, you, you because of all the microplastics, because of what you know, food is wrapped in plastic and shit. Is that you eat a credit card's worth of plastic a year? A week. A year. A week. Not a week. 
Look it's it a up, year. dude. Look it up. I'm pretty sure it's a year. Okay, what do you want to bet, dude? It's microplastics. You're not gonna, you, you know, you eat like chunks of plastic in a week. It's microplastics. Look it up. <laughs> I bet you. He's texting right. away. Do we eat a week? Five. A new study finds the average person could be swallowing. Five grams of plastic every week. That's equal. To, oh, I guess it is a credit card. Boom! Kachish! Down. Kabayam! I thought it was a year. Kadoosh! That's what I'm saying, dude. We got a Terminator 2 this thing, or Terminator 1, or the same movie. Anyways, go back in time and stop these dudes that want to consume plastic, Damn, man. In a year, you eat a firefighter's helmet worth of plastic. Yeah. A credit card size a week. Oh man, that's how I bad it, it is. A year. No, dude. Oh, you it's, schooled me, man. It's way worse. This is a credit card. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna shit that out. <laughs> <laughs> if only <laughs> I can be oh, shitting man. out money like that. Yes, that's Damn. coming out of you, or that's being consumed. I should say. Not, it's probably staying in you. So what do I gotta do? I gotta start. I don't know, man. We got to figure out some technology to remove plastic from the body now. Plastic's in everything, though. Literally, when We're you're... We're so dependent on plastic. When you're microwaving food in plastic... Mm. Although, I don't... Well, I guess you're right. There are some things that say microwave in this bag. Well, that's why I tell Crystal she, like, will leave a case of bottle in, in her car trunk and shit. And I tell oh. her... You can't do that. She's like, don't. why? It's like, because it gets heated up and all the, the plastic... Microplastic in melts and you're just drinking plastic. And you know what? And it's, I've known that for years. Yeah, and years they've and years. always said I've always known not to drink. But even when I have, and I'm like, oh, like I spit it, spit it out, or I don't drink anymore. I don't trust it. What well, doesn't taste right? No, it tastes weird. Right? How do people people just inhale that shit too? Like, oh. The you know that's why they have expiration dates on water bottles. It's not for the water. The water doesn't expire. It's the plastic. Because at that point, too much plastic has degraded into the water, where it's now. That's what I'm saying, drinkable. man. We got to we got to go back to the first person that decided to start using plastics, and Terminator them, dude. What What is the company that revolutionized plastic? Uh, Monsanto. No, they they were doing pesticides on shit. No, I think it well because they, whatever company was that that uh partnered with disney to create the home of tomorrow and it was all fucking made of plastic yeah but even before then they were using starting to use more and more plastics because if you think back in the days and stuff like that like the milk the milkman and stuff built they used glass a lot you know it was monsanto he started using plastic first not he but the company they were revolutionizing plastic yeah, but I'm saying they weren't the first ones, you know, like, I'm sure they were using it and, and making it popular, but we got to stop the first people that were, because that shit's everywhere, dude. And you know, they try to like pound, pound it into us that it's our problem and shit. Like, you got to recycle, make sure you recycle. It's like, how many times can we recycle, you know? Let's see. Who invented plastic? That's the question, right? Who invented plastic? Let's see. Alexa. I don't have Alexa. <laughs> Google. Hey, Google. All right. So the guy was Marketeer Leo Biakland, a Belgian chemist and clever marketeer Leo Biakland pioneered the first fully synthetic plastic in 1907 whoa there was two people after it it was a scottish rival james swinburne also who he beat to the patent office by one day so they were all working on it that somebody was going to come up with it yeah someone was going to unfortunately come up with and then eventually we would all be consuming it so if you're going to go back in time you got to kill both of those guys we got to kill a lot of people we're going to kill a lot of people yeah you're going to have to go to multiple you, labs you're going to have to create an entire like time force whose sole mission in life is to create people on the brink of creating plastic or kill people on the brink of creating plastic. Yeah. It's a, it's a Rick and Morty episode. It's like this whole loop of things. It's like 
you know, a time police for plastic. The TPPP. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, I don't know. We got way too much plastic inside of our body as it is, and it's probably slowly killing all of us. Hopefully we can figure out a way to get plastic out of our body now that we have put it in there, but that's going to be a mess. And it's just constantly being consumed, so we're constantly making more and more. So the fish are eating it. All of our food are eating it, and we're eating the food, and then we're getting the plastic from our food, from our water, everything. I mean, even that, it's like... We use plastic for everything. We use plastic grocery bags. There's a little plastic case up there for you. Everything's like plastic molded now. I mean, you're drinking water from a plastic water bottle. Yeah. Even uh, even the aluminum cans have a plastic lining. There's plastic in your headphones. Plastic in everything All over you this. touch and do. Yeah, that's why, I, like, dude, I got into an argument with this one dude, uh, one of my f- friends. Um, he uh, He was talking shit about LeBron. Um, he's like, oh, you support LeBron. You know LeBron su- it endorses China, and he doesn't say anything about the atrocities and the the mass genocide happening over there and blah, 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 you know? He's like just going on and on about LeBron, and I was like, you're worried about LeBron? That's your problem? I was like, and, and okay, so you don't like LeBron because he works with China. He makes money off of the deals that he does with China. And, you know, China is not good, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what are you doing? Can, uh, let me walk into your house and point out all the stuff in your house from China. You support China, <laughs> too. What are, you talk, what are we talking about here? <laughs> Everything that you have in your house has somehow been made by China. Like, it's like people have this, like, misguided, like, way of thinking. And then, like, I, I always think of it down to a base level, like... You know, you, if you don't like China, why are you supporting them then? You know, like, and I, wh- how am I supporting LeBron? Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. It's just, it's just funny, like, to see people's like get so passionate over something that's so that they're also involved in. Right. You, you don't exonerate yourself from the situation either. You're also supporting China. You know, you're not buying American made. There's, you know. I don't know. It's it's just dumb, but whatever. I'm not gonna act self righteous about. It's just people want to be on a higher moral moral ground. You know, they're always trying to be like, "You're doing it wrong," or "You're a piece of shit." You know, using plastic straws like that's gonna save the world. Stop using plastic straws, dude. Right. You know how much plastic is in the ocean? How about just u- stop using plastic? Can you do that? You know, stopping the pla- – just because you, we saw some turtles with, you know, plastic straws in their nose, everybody jumped on the bandwagon. But well, like, I think the problem is, is that turtles need to find another way to snort their drugs. Right. Stop using plastic straws, dude, and use yeah. dollar mean, bills. Like, yeah, use dollar bills like a normal person. Yeah. Grow some fucking hands. Damn turtle. They're going to outlive us anyways, dude. They're probably going to adapt. They already do. They're going <laughs> to have, have plastic shells or something. You know? They're going to find a way to adapt. We're going to be fucked. Maybe we'll adapt too. Maybe we'll just have s- plastic body parts or something. Like our DNA is starting to become plastic. We'll probably have to adapt with plastic. We're going to have plastic organs. Like Pla- in Bicentennial Man. Something, dude. We're going to have plastic teeth or something. We're going to have... I mean, we'll eventually adapt, right? If no, we, we can't have plastic teeth. If we're all dying... They wouldn't hold up chewing things. I don't know, man. There's pretty hard plastics. Even the hard plastics break, man. I mean, the teeth we have break right now. Well, yeah, but they replace them with teeth that, that don't break as easy. Yeah? Yeah. But what's that story about the president? About right? the what? Wasn't it Washington? Oh, yeah, he had wooden teeth. He had wooden teeth back I in the I thought day. it was worse than that, though. I thought I thought he didn't have the, the wooden teeth were just like it wasn't actual wooden teeth it was they used wood to hold the teeth and he had slaves teeth he would take What? He would take teeth out of his slaves. What you would take teeth out of slaves and what like mold them to the wood and then how would you put the wood in your like mouth? Like a mouthpiece like you know like a retainer style thing I guess. 
I think it was something like that, dude. Oh, that's brutal, man. You oh, just be like, way you worse. have some nice teeth, boy. Let me have them. Oh, yeah. Let's not go down that road, man. That's a dark road. That's fucking dark history. Yeah. Man. Yeah, don't ask me about things, dude. I, I didn't even ask you about that. Yeah. You brought it up. I did. You wanted to talk about slave teeth. No, I didn't. But I just thought of it. That's fucked up, man. And then you said wooden teeth, and then I thought you already knew about the No, thing. I just thought they had like cut a fucking cherry tree down and I, made teeth out of it. I think that's what the story was, but it's really dark. It got it's real really... dark. Yeah, you know like Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. He got shot, right? Yeah. He didn't die right away. Everybody thinks he just died. He like died days later, dude. No fucking way. Yeah, dude. They're just like, uh, yeah, dude, just lay down like a... Uh, I You'll think, be all right. Yeah, I we've think got the best doctors. We could probably fix it, but I don't think we will. You know, like I don't know, it was something like that, dude. Like what the fuck? That sucks. Yeah, these bullets weren't like. Was he like conscious during that time? I or? don't know. I don't know what his state was in, but I know he didn't die right away. Like they don't talk about that. That's some fucked up shit. Yeah, I heard it on something or I read it somewhere or something, dude. Like, yeah, Lincoln got fucked up, but he didn't die right away. Like, they took him, they ambulanced him, and they put a patch on him, and they kind of gave him shitty care, and he just ended up dying. Dude. Yeah. I can't imagine that, like, healthcare was amazing back then anyway. Yeah, I don't think it was the greatest. I mean, a lot of... They're still doing, like, blood transfusions. Although, I think we had one president that died with, like, multiple bullets in his body. Because, you know, the guns... Teddy Roosevelt get like fucking shot and then we had a president that was doing duels dude like you know full on like i will shoot you we stand uh who's that was that like thomas jefferson oh man i don't know man my i remember things but i don't remember all the details sometimes so well you got to come up with the details i man. i could be making all you this can't shit be up too. Like s- i'm giving something for people well, to know, look up i know that they did duels in that time because um I watched that Hamilton show, the movie, the play thing. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a real thing. The, and there was one president. I want okay, this is all, like whatever. You're gonna have to look this shit up because I don't have the best memory. But there was one president that was dueling so much that he had like nine bullets in his body when nine he died. Nine bullets? Something like that. Oh shit! Like he died with bullets in his body still that they never took out. That sounds like way too many bullets, man. It's a lot. Because back then when they had the duels and they shot each other or whatever, they didn't usually die from it. They would actually live. So it wasn't like a full on like, uh, you know, you die kind of. I mean, I guess you could probably succumb to some of your your injuries. But uh, yeah, apparently you could live with this shit inside of you. But anyways, that's crazy. Enough about presidents. What's up with you, yo? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me thinking about all that shit, man. I don't know what to say about it now. What do you think? What kind of guns are we gonna have in like ten years, dude? Are we gonna have ever have laser guns? Like they promised us laser guns, like back in the eighties, dude. Like I don't know if that's practical, though. You don't think they're they're working on that? You don't think we like. All right, so for a laser gun to be practical, like the laser bolts, I guess. Would it shoot out a bolt, or would it just be a zzz, like a straight Like beam? a constant stream of laser? Yeah, because they got that gun in uh, Halo, which is... The Spartan laser? Yeah, totally fictional, but... No, the... But that one even charges beam. up to be like, okay, now release all this energy as a laser. But, like, I, I feel like that would take... I don't know. I don't a lot know. of power. It'd take a lot of power. I just don't see it being practical. You got someone like just pointing a laser at you. You're like, they're just going to cut you up with a laser? I don't know. The, I mean, the power. Is that what it does, though? These batteries are getting stronger and stronger for our phones. So, That's I mean. That's so destructive is what I'm saying, though. Because, like, now you got you? You to gotta aim this laser perfectly. Like, can you think about, like, a, a standoff gunfight between armed robbers and police? And, like, they're fighting with lasers so now the lasers just like cutting through cars and cutting through like buildings and shit it's gonna be fucked there's like so much civilian damage now because like these lasers are uncontrollable 
they're w- definitely working on lasers. I feel like if they had to be lasers, they'd have to be done like laser bolts that shoot out like in Star Wars. I have or a something. family member. I won't say their name because they refuse to talk about it. But every time I ask them, they always say, I work with lasers. And I always go like, like what kind of lasers? Do you like you need small lasers or like, la- like, are you lasering like items or and all they will say was i work with lasers they won't ever give me any more details that's just so broad it is they they don't tell you where they work no i don't think they're allowed to i don't know they have they're definitely educated for sure they went to school and well i believe if they work with lasers they're they're some type of education (laughs) i don't know dude but (laughs) do you think like a homeless guy's like i work with lasers well yeah okay (laughs) But what if he really was, dude? <laughs> and he's like, I'm not going to talk about it. Why would he? He's homeless. He's, he can say whatever the fuck he wants. He just believes he works with lasers. He believes but he, just, he does anything. Yeah. I mean, do you think there's real smart people that are not educated? Uh, if movies have taught me anything, Goodwill Hunting is an example of yes. Yes, there is. Well, wasn't there that one kid that was like a composer? Like when he was... Th- like composing music as like a two-year-old or something or a three-year-old Beethoven yeah he was basically our our or Beethoven was it Mozart no no, no 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 I'm not I'm not talking that far off I'm talking about like in the 2010s it oh. was like a kid genius and they oh, were comparing him genius. to Beethoven like he would write these symphonies and like he would write all these crazy orchestras in his head and he would have to write him down every day. And like he was like a, he's a kid genius. The only kid genius I know of is Jimmy Neutron and Dexter. Yeah, these are fictional characters. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have I don't hang out with kid geniuses. <laughs> uh, you don't hang out with kid geniuses? Come on. Everybody does. I'm just kidding. No, um I don't know, man. I I read a lot of shit sometimes and it's all well, we're reading totally different things i know like you're i'm coming under- up with with so much fucking shit you're blowing my mind man <laughs> i'm on a different part of the internet I guess. you are man you're like the sophisticated part of it no dude i've read it in the new york times <laughs> there's definitely some bad shit too in there man but uh i try to remember the good stuff you know <laughs> the, the interesting stuff you know, the credit card sides plastic shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it hurts my stomach just thinking about it, man. I don't want to eat a credit card. I know. Could nobody does. Can you imagine does. being like forced to eat a credit card? Like someone just put a gun to your head and been like, eat this credit card before I shoot you with my laser pistol. Uh, <laughs> it's so crunchy. You are. You are eating it. Shit. Damn. It's like, Fuck. I already ate one this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many credit cards are we going to eat in our life? Fuck, man. I don't want to think about how many credit cards I've eaten in a lifetime. What? All right, so It's going to get worse. If we have... Yeah, I just read that same article. I didn't want to bring it up. But that same article I was reading here... It says uh, it's going to be like two credit cards a week soon. About the... Um, how much plastic we eat. Consume. Yeah, it was in a year. They said firefighter helmets. Uh, the rate of consumption oh. in a decade, oh. we could be eating 5.5 pounds oh. in plastic. Ugh. The equivalent to two sizable pieces of plastic pipe. And over a lifetime, we consume 44 pounds of microplastic. Oh. What you... 44 pounds. Holy now, shit. we consume it, but does it leave our body? I mean, you got to believe some of it is... Because I'm thinking, like, we're not... Our body's not decomposing any nutritional values of it. So how much of that 44 pounds that we have consumed is actually going to stay permanently in our body? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Because, like, you could say that in a lifetime I've eaten, like, 57 jars of peanut butter, but it's not like I'm not made of peanut butter. Yeah, but, but... You, your body did absorb the nutrients from it. So, I mean, the water. Yeah, but I mean, that stuff gets used, though, right? Isn't that the whole. I mean, our body's pretty idea? efficient at getting rid of shit that we can't break down and we can't consume. 
But I mean, if it, if you're talking about on a micro level, I'm sure there's some shit that's sticking around that ain't getting, you know, it's getting stuck on the walls of your intestines. You know, it's. So what do I got to do? Like a juice cleanse? I don't know if juice is gonna fix it. <laughs> I don't know. Man. What do I gotta do? Like an apple cider vinegar you're cleanse? You're gonna have to be like Trump and drink some bleach, dude. Fuck! I don't want to drink bleach. That stuff stored in plastic too. Uh, is it? Is it? Is, is it not? Have well, you not know, like oh, a plastic container of bleach? It's got some bleach in it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Fuck. it's got to be. I mean, yeah, isn't that kind of crazy? There's uh, probably, there's probably. I don't know why I said it like that, but there's probably a percentage of plastic in bleach, right? Because it's probably think so. Then it's probably slowly breaking down the walls of its container, right? Unless it's like a uh, fucking what was it? Um, in Breaking Bad. Where he's like tells him to go. You, you've seen Breaking. No, no. You've never seen fucking Breaking Bad. Sorry, man. Ah, you're killing me, man. Why? Never seen it. Dude. Oh my god. I almost All like right, so not watching I shows like that because look. I haven't watched Game of Thrones either. Oh my Jesus. Yeah. See, see, it almost on, it almost drink. satisfies me to get that reaction from people because they don't only say it one time. They don't just say you haven't seen game of thrones and i go no wait you haven't seen you've got to stop spending all your time figuring out the black history the dark history the fucking uh, you know scorn of the earth type shit looking into child geniuses and start watching some good fictional tv man yeah yeah watch more breaking bad less credit card size yes plastics a week yes please the science in breaking bad is amazing I'll watch it. I think. I think if I had to choose, or uh, if I had to guess, if I'll watch Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones, I'd probably watch Breaking Bad first. It's good. Yeah. I mean, I. I but there's so many good shows right now. They don't care about the good there's shows new right ones, now. Watch though. some of the the stuff before it's too old. Like I just because, watched. No, no, no. Because you're gonna get to a point where it's like I can't watch Breaking Bad anymore. Because the quality of the TV that it was filmed in and everything is different. Like, the cell phone technology that they used, I can't relate to it anymore. Uh, I think I'll still take it as... Will I'm you not... watch something that was, like, made in the 60s? Yeah. You'll watch all, like, Star Trek? Dude, I just watched Predator for the 7,000th time the other night. But does I it... love that movie. But what I'm saying and is, And his like... technology is shit. Yes, yes, yes. But, but I love the Predator. I actually think that was an, ac- an accurate depiction my point is, of a camouflaged individual, the way it was bending light. Like, uh, you know, it wasn't completely invisible, but it was bending light to the point where if it was standing still, you wouldn't see it, right? But when he started moving, you could see there was your eye can detect like, oh, shit, this is something's there's something off. off. Right. Like, it's not perfectly done like i like that my point though I, whoever thought of that was a fucking genius dude it's a guy who's like well how would you camouflage somebody they did kind of make him look like a chameleon though you would just reflect you know well they have a plane that's done that right that that can camouflage and it 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 does some kind of reflective lighting kind of thing no i don't think i so. thought a they plane? did no come on dude you're no, talking they to have a plane that's created that can camouflage against radar. I saw this in Spider-Man Homecoming, okay? So this it has fiction. to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Stop using my excuses now. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be real, dude. I saw it in Spider-Man Homecoming. They have this technology. No, you always wonder, like, when you're watching a movie and they do some shit like that, you're like, ah, they probably got something like that, you know? Like, I mean, we don't get to see all the cool shit. Like, we, we're getting cool shit that they were probably doing way back. Like, they probably had 4K a long-ass time ago, and we're, like, Well, barely... a lot of the stuff starts in fiction and becomes reality. I mean, a lot of, like, the... Like, take, like, cell phones, like, flip phones and shit like that. That all, like, came out of Star Trek, man. Star Trek was doing video calls and shit before, like, we even thought it was yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's definitely been, like, uh technology that the that's come out in fiction in science fiction before it actually came about but nobody thought it was going to be like what we're 
using now. Like nobody predicted it was going to be these smartphones that have, you know, video capabilities and all this shit. Like, I'm still waiting for the paper thin tablets, dude. What are those things at, man? Like literal paper thin. Yeah, like the ones you could like transparent. Oh, you know? like uh, the the. The, like the rolling screens and shit yeah, that like, Samsung has. Yeah, like that kind of shit. You know, we're getting thinner and thinner. It's going to get there. They have them. They just don't want to give them to the public because they're not practical. Yeah, they're not cost efficient. They're not practical. Well, it's, it's not even like that. It's like, I think the practicality of it. Like if you mass produce something like that, people aren't going to, people aren't going to keep them with the, like, if you had flexible screens and shit, they're flexible. Yeah, they can roll up. Yeah. But you still got to be gentle with them enough. And someone's not going to treat them like that. And so then it becomes this big issue. It's like, oh, well, it breaks too much. People aren't going to want to. Well, it. it'll it'll be used when it's not no longer expensive. So, like, if the cost to make it was really cheap then yeah we'll see them everywhere but well they started taking that technology and they adapt it into other things that they could do with it so like you know they make the thin screens that's how they start putting things yeah. under the screens now. they are folding like lcd screens now cameras and punch holes in the screens or the fingerprint sensors or even the screens on like your samsung what device do you think that that curve off the edge what do you think is going to be next what do you think they're going to make next if you had to guess, where's technology going? Of what? Like, like, let's just say with cell phones. What do you think? How do you think cell, a cell phone's gonna look in twenty, thirty five? <sighs> Is it gonna just stay the same? Is this it? Have we reached peak cell phone? I don't know, man. Because like one of the big selling points of this is what do you what do you do with your cell phone? One, it's got to be an internet capable device. It's got to be multimedia, right? So that's that's one of the things. So you've got to have what they've been doing, a decent screen with great resolution so that you can enjoy all different types of this media. Then also, one of the other big selling points of cell phones is cameras. People always talk about the cameras on the phone. Be able to take a picture of anything at any point. Yeah. So unless camera sensors get smaller and thinner, uh, that has to be a next huge technological step so because that's why we have bumps on these cameras it's not because like oh it's aesthetic it's because the sensors in these cameras can only go so deep into the phone in order to get the quality of that camera that's what i'm saying what do you think a phone is going to look like in 20 i would think 35 still screen like this um thinner maybe just thinner paper no not paper thin no It'll never be paper thin. I don't think so. Ooh. Uh, and if it is, it's not going to be by that time. No, it'll be. You think it'll take longer? I if think it's we're paper thin. It's paper fragile. So now you need a technology of like glass or something that is resistant against bends or something, or it's got to be a flexible screen. But then you have all these other components. What else are you gonna? Where are you gonna put it? Micro, man. We got to keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking yeah. the technology down. So that's not going to happen in a decade. Maybe. No. I mean, it's not even a decade. We got less than a decade. We got like, what, eight years? 35? Oh, 35. Sorry. I'm thinking 30. Yeah, a decade. <laughs> 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 I, I still don't think so. I don't know. No. No. Wow. So what do you think it'll be then? It'll just be a thinner phone? Just be thinner. Yeah. Yeah. You ever you ever think we're just gonna abandon this phone? You think it'll be attached to us at some point? You think it'll be like our wrist That's or our hand? What if it's our hand? If I seen I seen I've those seen, where I've like seen those two is like they're just like touching their. What's the uh, what's that show? Upload on Amazon again. Um, or what if it's your glasses? They have like the phone like that. They tried that. Didn't work. Well, it hasn't worked yet, but it doesn't mean it's not gonna work in the future. That means that they'll they'll try something else, but like, then you because I think it'll be an interactive glass technology where you see through the if world. If it ever becomes part of you, like what Zuckerberg like is trying to wear. do, Zuckerberg is trying to do this 
interactive glass thing where you see the world, but you also see enhancements to it. Like if you said, I want to go to the corner store, it'll show you a direction on your glass. Like it'll give you a path. Yeah. I think that's what like Google glass was trying to do at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're trying to do it for a reason because they think they can accomplish it. I definitely think it's accomplishable and I think it's definitely yeah. something that's like interesting. So what if they but just put a camera in the glass and then you just you know, blink or something? You're literally talking about Google Glass. That was the whole entire yeah. concept of it. Yeah. They did it already. It's been done, but it caused too much controversy. And also it was an issue with like people having to wear that stuff all the time. Yeah, but you have your phone all the time anyway. So. Well, you just told to replace the phone instead. But you don't have your phone all the time. Your phone is always around you, but everybody, it's not always on you. Everybody pretty much has their phone all the time. I like I'm saying though is like you. There's certain times where you don't have your phone. Like you're not gonna wear your phone to bed. You're not gonna wear your phone in the shower. You pretty much damn do, man. It's next to your nightstand shirt. You take your glasses off. It would be the same concept. And it's you a take... relief when I take them off. I hate yeah, wearing my glasses. Exactly. So it'd be like your Google Glass would be your. Your phone and then right, right, right. You but would my take thing here, my point is, is that I need glasses. I don't have a choice. Yeah. I have to wear glasses. I can't see. Yeah. You're gonna give people the choice to like use your cell phone, your device, your communications hub, and it's gonna be in your glasses. Yeah, I would do it if I didn't have to hold something and I could. Just and now look you've got to wear glasses if I want to use that function. If I don't, I could just take them off. So are we gonna have? Well, no, no. I think eventually that's, that's your your whole entire thing was it's your glasses. I think eventually it'll be like fucking Batman, dude. You put the contacts on, dude. Oh my god! Then they are gonna have eyes drying out all the time. Yeah, hey, people use contacts all the time. They're fine. If if it was become wearable technology, yeah, I think having it somewhere in your hands. You like the hand version. Like I was saying, upload, so what, upload you, did it decently. Would you just open your hand and then an image would pop up? Right. Or uh, think about um, what was that movie? Uh, Total Recall. Yeah. Remember where they just like put their hand on a screen and they've now transferred. Uh, they like using the screen as a display for the technology. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Are you talking about the new Total Recall? Yes. Yeah, I only saw it one time because I saw the original. So, So, like, basically he wanted to do a video call, okay? And so he went up to a car window and he put his hand on the car window. And started using it. And the car window now became the screen for his communication device. Oh, okay, yeah, they've done that in a couple movies. Yeah, so I would say something like that. Um, Upload, again, as I was trying to say, they they would go like this, all right? And... This part of the L of your hand would project the display out. Yeah. And so you're holding your hand up and you're talking to someone, right? Yeah. Or you're you're using the phone like that. Yeah. Um, so I would think maybe that's a route. I've seen where they've done like the 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 prototype of having like the phone projected onto your arm, your forearm. So now you have like a display projected on your forearm. I think they're working on putting some shit in your arms. Yeah. Would you or, do? Uh, or they go to the Futurama route and just shove it all in your brain. That's how the about next Upgrade, thing. man. Remember the movie Upgrade? Upgrade. You never saw a movie Upgrade? What year did that come out? Oh man. Well, what's that about? Actually? Dude, that was a fucking trippy ass movie, dude. They had guns in their arms. They had guns in their arms? Yeah, they're like... And they would shoot you with the fucking handgun, dude. Literally. Let me see. It's you... called Upgrade? Dude, you gotta watch Upgrade, man. I can't believe you've never seen I it. I might have, but you're not explaining it. You're just explaining part of it. <laughs> this is the only movie I've ever seen with a dude with a gun in his, built into his arm. You know what? This looks familiar. 2018, yeah. Let me see. That was a crazy Avengers. ass movie, dude. You gotta watch this. It's on Hulu. It it looks familiar, this poster art, but Dude, this movie know. is fucking awesome, man. Wait, this image looks familiar too. 
I don't know. I think maybe I have seen it, but I can't remember it. Dude, watch Upgrade. It's on Hulu. Dude, I'll watch Upgrade right now. What? How much time we got on here, dude? We're at an uh, hour and 24 minutes. Hell yeah. Let's go watch fucking Upgrade, dude. <laughs> Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> yeah. All right. I guess we can. All right, man. We'll end sure, it. Sure, man. Sure. This, this has been an Upgraded. This has been uh, another episode. lovely episode of Digital Cortex. Your host, Steven. Um, Random Styles. All AKA, right. we can, AKA Pete. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Later. Later.